Hey, what's shaking, YouTube? It's Andrew, and um, I haven't done a video in quite a while because I've been busy with um, all kinds of stuff, family. Uh, I work at Walmart, so uh, the holiday season equals buku busy for us. So, Plus, I really haven't had anything that interesting to show, so I'm going to... A few weeks ago, um, Howler Mouse did a video for... Uh, he showed off all of his graphic novels and stuff, so I figured that'd be a good idea for uh, for me to do, so... I figured I'd you know grab a chunk and show you guys what I got. Um, this installment will be the non-superhero titles and the independent stuff. Okay, here you go. Okay. And uh, apparently, Abby wanted Abby wanted to show you her her bear. This is Mr. Wilson. Um, see, there's Abby. You want to get in here too, Isabel? Okay. Okay. I got, I got my Okay, here, let me see. There you go. There you go. Say hi. 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 Say hi. 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 Okay, guys. Uh, Daddy's got to do this video, okay? So, here. Hop down. Hop down. Okay. Number one. And hey, Abby, there's Mr. Wilson. We'll go get him. There you go, Mr. Wilson. Okay. There he is. He's right there. Okay, guys. Um, they just wanted to say hi and um, see what we want to start with. Um, I, I suppose we could start with um, some Alan Moore. Uh, v for Vendetta, of course, a classic. This is a um, really good graphic novel. It's a ten-part series done by Vertigo. Uh, I believe this was before um, Al Moore got screwed over by DC. And then, of course, here's Watchmen. So, oh, piece of paper. This is Watchmen. This is, um, in my opinion, one of the greatest graphic novels ever printed. And uh, this was after Al Moore got screwed over by DC. Uh, but if you guys don't have this in your collection, you guys need to pick it up. You can get it for like three dollars on on eBay on um, Amazon. So okay. Uh, next, Isabel is wanting me to show you the Adventures of Tintin, uh, book one. This has. Um, Tintin in America, the Cigars of the Pharaoh, and the Blue Lotus. Uh, there's a lot of um, off-color, um, you know, slightly racist um, remarks uh, towards Native Americans in the Tintin in America book. It really shows uh, the times. Here's um, here's book two. This one has um, the Broken Ear. The Black Island and King Odakar's scepter. This is probably my favorite Tintin story, which is the um, the uh, the Black Island. It's got a gorilla. It's got you know smugglers. Tintin gets shot. Lots of um, snowy mischief. If you guys are gonna read any of them, read uh, the Black Island. It, you like that one? Yeah. And then here's the third one, which is. Um, the Crab with the Golden Claws, The Shooting Star, and The Secret of the Unicorn. I like the that. Secret of the Unicorn like was one of the ones that they based the movie on. I like it. Okay. Like Going along with books that aren't the same size as comics, I've got uh, Neil Gaiman's Coraline. This has got P. Craig Russell art, like which is a lot different than the art in the... Um, I like it. You like them? Okay, here, you can... Here, why don't you go look at it? But don't mess it up. This uh, art's different than the Tim Burton animation. Oh, I'll be darned. Those are the same size. Uh, let's see. One, in my opinion, one of uh, another one of the greatest graphic novels ever printed has nothing to do with superheroes. It's uh, it's Mouse, done by Art Spiegelman. Yes, the same Art Spiegelman of um, Garbage Pail Kids fame. Uh, he's telling his dad's story. His dad is a survivor of the, of the Holocaust. And uh, this is actually in two parts, but I forgot the second part on the bookshelf. So, um, 
I figured I'd just show you part one. Um, but this book is really good. It, he tells his father's story, so it shows his father going through the Holocaust, but it also shows um, his relationship with art. Like, um, the Nazis are, are cats, the, the Jews are mice. It's in this hand-drawn art style. It's really good. Uh, pick it up. I highly recommend this. I actually read this in college, and um, I still I still love this book. So definitely pick it up. There's a part two as well, but um, as I aforementioned, it's on the bookshelf. Uh, let's see. My wife actually got me this for um, for I think Easter one year instead of candy. It's the Action Bible. It's uh, basically where they go and get a bunch of um, the Old Testament and New Testament stories, and they um, they do them to uh, they add dialogue and um, stuff like this. Like um, it's got all kinds of art in here. The the art's decent. Um, I mean, it's no, uh, it's it's not the other Bible, which was done by um, was it Joe Kubert? I think did the other one. Uh, it's it's not it's not the same, but it's still a really good book. From what I understand, this book's kind of hard to find too. Um, let's see. And it looks like oh, we got. Okay, uh, we've got Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Um, I want to be honest. I, I I was not a fan of Sandman the first time I read it. Um, but then after going back and reading it, um, I, I bought the Sandman Overture, book one, and um, so I kind of felt compelled to go back and read this, and um, it was a lot better the second time through. Um, I'm reading a do The Doll's House right now, and it's uh, once again on the bookshelf, so um, yeah, I've got book one and two. I'm hoping to get a few more of them. So, uh, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, this is the first book. Um, this was different than the movie. This was very different than the movie. And from what I understand, the reason why it was so different is because the production company that did the movie had a hard time getting the rights to certain things. Like um, The Invisible Man, his name was different in the movie, and they never called him The Invisible Man. Um, there's no Tom Sawyer in the graphic novel. But there's a lot of... Um, off-color things in here, a lot of politically incorrect stuff in here, like when they go to the boarding school, and you find out that the Invisible Man is, um, okay, there you go, it's red. That's green as well. I know you like green. That. Um, but, uh, there's a, the, the boarding school where they think they're getting Immaculate Conception, but it's really the Invisible Man. Um, and things of that nature. And then there's some really kind of, you know, inappropriate gestures towards Miss Harper uh, in, the, in, the, in the book. But all in all, it's a good story. Definitely worth reading. Uh, the second one, I actually have in Singles, which is the one that's got the, the Martians invading. So it's like kind of like... Um, War of the Worlds, there we go. War of the Worlds is what I was trying to think of. Um, and it looks like the rest of this giant stack is all image, so... Let's see... I guess we'll start here. Um, we'll pick this up, uh, Chew, book one. I don't remember where I... Somebody on YouTube recommended that I read this. And uh, so I picked it up. Um... I'm wanting to say it was Captain Cummings suggested that I read this, so, um, and so I picked it up, and I ended up, um, ended up reading it. Uh, it's his first book, Taster's Choice. Um, uh, book two, International Flavor. Book three, Just Desserts. And book four, Flambe. I've got I've got the rest up to current in um in singles, so um
I've got all these on a TV tray, so it's kind of starting to tip the TV tray because this TV tray is cheap and uh, graphic novels are heavy. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got the rest up to, up to current, which I think they're up to issue 39 or 40 right now. Um, current, and they've had like three different storylines. They've had like Major League Chew, Space Cake, um, Space Cakes, and um, Family Recipe. I think is the one they're on now. But it's a great series if you like a lot of like kind of food related references. And uh, there's a lot of you know it, this book is hilarious. The entire series, Chew. Hilarious, hilarious stuff. Uh, I warn you, there's some foul language and there are some inappropriate jokes, so if you're not into that kind of thing, um, it might not be for you, but hey, if you're okay with a few F-bombs and some and some off-color jokes, then pick it up. If you really want to laugh, laugh till you almost pee yourself. Let's see. Next on the agenda, I guess we'll take this giant chunk. Um, as you guys know, I'm a Walking Dead fan, so I've got, like, the first 13 volumes in, in, a trade paperback, just because of the fact that, um, I actually didn't start reading until the first season of the TV show came out, and, um, so basically I got up to current at that point, which was, I think, issue 13, yeah, issue 13 was current for the, the, the world of The Walking Dead when the TV show came out, so I was impatient, so I just started buying singles, so... Um, days gone by. This is this is the first one. This is where um, Shane dies at the end, and he should have died in the TV show instead of them dragging him around for another season. No complaints, but still, come on, guys. Um, a big disappointment for those who uh, started watching the TV show and read the graphic novel. There is no Daryl in the graphic novel. I know. Take it up with Kirkman. Maybe he'll take your suggestion. I seriously doubt it, but he might. Okay. Miles behind us. This is where they leave the camp. They find that little subdivision. And um, this is also where they find Herschel's farm. Uh, Tyrese is also introduced in this one. Okay, hold on here. I'll put Clubhouse on here. One second. Talk, some, talk amongst yourselves. i got to go find some Disney. There you go, Isabel. Three, safety behind bars. This is where they find the prison. Um, my volumes of four and five are currently loaned out to my buddy Chris, who uh, has been wanting to read the series. No, Abby, no. No, because these will fall on you, and that wouldn't be good. So we will be picking up in issue six. This is, I believe, after they found the governor and they've escaped Woodsbury. No, Abby doesn't want that. No, she doesn't. Uh, this is this is six. I'm pretty sure this is after they get back from Woodsbury and the, and uh, you find out that the governor is dead. Uh, the calm before this is where um, Lori actually gives birth to. Um, um, the baby, and um, th they're preparing for the governor's inevitable strike on the prison. Made to suffer, this is where the governor actually attacks the prison, and he um, kills off like half the people in the in the prison, including Lori and um, the baby. I'm sorry, spoiler, spoiler. This has been out for several years, so uh, if you haven't read it by now, um, I'm sorry. Um, this is where he kills Lori and the baby, and then the governor, in turn, is killed by his own people, which is what should have happened the first time the governor uh, screws over the pe his people in the TV show. Instead of making him do that, you know, oh, oh, I, my people left me in the woods. Now, now I'm all sad, and now I'm going to go find a family and get humanity back, and then screw everybody over. Sorry if you guys haven't seen the the uh, mid season. Um, finale for The Walking Dead, which was last Sunday, but um, I really hated that. I hated the fact that, you know, 
the guy, um, Brian, was, um, he was like, oh, yes, yes, we are going to go non-violently, we're going to get them to leave the prison. And then what's he do? He decapitates Herschel, and everybody's just kind of standing there like, all of the governor's people are just standing there like, oh, he had to do it, he had to do it, even though like 10 minutes earlier he talked about not wanting to, you know, shed any blood and how he's a good guy and all that. And yet they're surprisingly cool with him decapitating an old man who has nothing but a good idea saying, hey, let's work together, guys. They listen to this giant speech from Rick about how they're not too far gone. And, oh, I'm sorry, too far gone. Yeah, volume 13, too far gone. Anyway, but they listen to the governor, um, I mean, they listen to Rick talk about how they can work together, and the governor goes liar and decapitates him. I'm sorry. Okay, that's enough of a rant. We're at 16 minutes. Let's move on. Uh, here we remain. This is where this is some of the source material for the next uh, Walking Dead episodes. Um, basically, uh, in the mid-season finale, um, Rick gets shot in the leg. He also gets spanked by the governor, and um, he and um, Carl are forced to go off in, in, on their own. There's a few other groups here and there, like Daryl and Mich Daryl's with a group. Michonne's on her own. Uh, there's a few other groups, but looking forward to the TV show, despite the fact that I really didn't like the mid-season finale. Uh, Ten, what we've become. If I remember correctly, this is where uh, Rick tries to go find supplies, and he gets stopped by like some highwaymen, kind of like at that scene in the Book of Eli. And I'm pretty sure this is where Rick bites a guy in the junk. I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure this is the one where Carl watches his father bite a man in the junk to keep them alive. At least I'm assuming that's what it is because he's all bloody. So I haven't read these in a while. So uh, Fear of the Hunters. This is where Dale. This is where Dale dies. Those cannibals find him, and they cook Dale's other leg, and he goes, "Ha! Ah, the joke's on you. I was bitten before." And then Rick's people show up and mercilessly kill all of the uh, hunters. Um, life among them. This is after they find the that community, and um, the community and um, the leader. Um, crap, what was this man? It's the guy that ends up. Uh, wigging out and shooting Carl when the zombies break the wall. But there's that. Hold on, Isabel. I'll get you out in a second. Hold on. She got her finger stuck in the. Thirteen's around here somewhere. I set it down. And uh, my last two graphic novels for this installment are Saga Book One. If you guys haven't read this, this book is awesome. They're they're on volume two, and I think they're about to come over to season three. And uh, Five Ghosts. I just picked this up. Um, uh, a couple about a week ago. It's uh, I've been I was wanting to get it for a while. My my shop only got one copy and they sold out. And for some reason they couldn't get more. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. A lot of you guys said a lot of good things about it. And um, I saw that it was originally on Kickstarter. Like originally they wanted to get funding for their book on Kickstarter. So I'm looking forward to reading it. And um, yeah, uh, I've got an order coming up from uh, my comic shop so when it gets here I'll show you guys and um, um, I've also got some more graphic novels I'll probably show the Marvel one ne Marvel ones next and then DC um, as Ben would say uh, saving the best for last no I'm just kidding uh, you like Marvel like DC anyway 
Um, uh, just thanks for watching, guys, and um, I'll um, talk to you guys later. See you. Bye.